everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a Korean pork and potato soup called Kamjatang. If you guys want to know how to make this, hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. I'm starting off with one pound of bok choy. You can use whatever green leafy plant that you prefer. The Napa cabbage at my store didn't look that great so I skipped that. But they did have these and they looked fine so this is what I'm using, but again use kale, use napa cabbage, use regular cabbage if you like, or use bok choy. They will all work great in this soup. Now grab any strainer basket, throw your vegetable in there, and give these guys a good rinse. There's going to probably be dirt on the ends of it, in between the leaves, anywhere you might think of. Just give these guys a good little shower. Now grab a pot of boiling water and throw your vegetable of choice in there. We're going to let it sit for a few minutes and let it blanch, uh, well, you know, where it's not super hard and it's not super soft, it's right in the middle. But leave those in there for a few minutes. I think it might take about two to three minutes. And I went ahead and just flipped it to make sure the ones on top got underneath so that it's properly blanched. After a few minutes, go ahead and remove these guys and just set them aside in a basket, letting them cool off because they're going to be too hot to touch. I'm using pork neck bones. I found this obviously in my H Mart store, but you can find them in most stores, I think. But if you can't, use just any kind of pork with a rib or a bone in it. Throw all of those into a large pot, fill up your pot with some water, and then boil it on high heat for 10 to 15 minutes. While that's going, let's grab some veggies that we're gonna start making our stock with, which is just one medium onion, a chili pepper, a green onion, actually two, and some ginger sliced up. I like to prep all my veggies ahead of time so this is a potato and pork stew so I grabbed four potatoes for four servings and I cut them up, well peeled them obviously, and then cut them up into large chunks. Slice them up however you like. You actually don't even have to do this part if you don't want to but I like them in smaller chunks. And then set those aside in some water so it doesn't brown. It's been about 10 to 15 minutes or so, and I'm going to go ahead and throw these guys into a strainer basket so that I can rinse these off. The reason why I'm rinsing these off is because there could be bone fragments on there, or, you know, just fat or vessels or anything else that you don't want to eat. So if you don't want any of that on there, just go ahead and remove it. Everything should come off pretty easily. It should be soft enough where it just pulls right off without you having to work too hard for it. Once that's done, go ahead and give these guys a good little shake and set them aside. Now grab the pot that you were cooking with earlier, give this a good wash. Grab your scrubby pad, get your soap, like it's a brand new pot. We're going to scrub everything off, we're going to treat it like we're cooking this in a brand new pot again. Once your pot is cleaned up, go ahead and throw your pork bones right back into it and the veggies that we had pre-sliced earlier with four tablespoons of soybean paste. I use about a tablespoon per pound of pork. Now we're going to use a lot of water in this, about 11 cups I think is what I use. Pour all of that in there to make sure it's all covering everything all the way up to the top. We'll be cooking this on your high temperature until it becomes a rapid boil. Then turn it down to a medium setting and let it cook for an hour and 15 minutes. Make sure you watch this otherwise it will overboil. Now this is perilla seed powder. It is a fine powder that has the seed peeled already and ground it up to a fine texture. This was not an easy find. I went to four stores to find this powder and that small bag cost me five bucks. So I already have all my ingredients in a bowl. I'm going to go ahead and add a quarter cup of perilla powder right into that and then I'm going to add three tablespoons of my soup broth so I can help mix this up. Do this part carefully because you do have the, pow the powder and the flakes and you don't want that flying around anywhere. And mix it until you get a nice little paste like this. So once you're done with your soup, you can actually eat it the way that it is. Just serve it over rice and it'll be really good. But if you want to garnish it because you're going to plate this for someone or someone's coming over or if you just like to make things nice and pretty, Go ahead and grab some of these veggies, chop them up, and then sprinkle it right on top. I am using perilla leaves, a couple of green onions. Uh, I did, if you notice, chop my green onions diagonally, just the green part, and then the white part I'm cutting them nice and small, just to have different elements, you know? 
and obviously a green chili pepper and enoki mushroom sitting right there in the back. So it's been about an hour and 15 minutes since I started with my pot with the stock to be boiling. So at this time I'm just going to remove all the veggies that I don't want in there. The large chunks of green onion, the uh, onions itself, the pepper, whatever it is that you don't like. And now I'm going to add the bok choy that we blanched earlier with all my potato chunks and then grab your seasoning paste, throw that right on top. You don't want to waste any of the seasoning paste, so go ahead and scoop some of the soup right into the bowl, mix it up, and pour it right in. I'm going to let this boil for another 15 minutes, and then my potatoes should be done, and I'll be ready to plate it. I generally don't like to add a lot of salt into my food, but if you find this a little too bland, go ahead and add salt into your soup once you're done plating your food. Make sure you sprinkle all the garnishments on top to make it nice and pretty. And if you guys like this video, please hit subscribe. And until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.